in Drabic's magic at Michigan keeps his hopes alive. Will someone else join him in victory lane to ensure their future in the round of eight? We'll find out soon as we get ready to watch round 12 of the Goat Locker Racing Truck Series presented by Jam Printing and Promotions. And you'll see it all live here on Podium Esports. Hi, I'm Joe Peak, and joining me in the booth is Roush Racing driver Joey Atterbury. Behind the scenes are director Eddie Smith, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beer. Joey, we go short track racing this time, really the opposite of what we had last time out at, uh, at Michigan. And it's going to be a little hectic, if we're honest. Yeah, it's going to be very hectic around Richmond. It's the short track mentality. You're right. We came off pretty much the super speedway of Michigan in these trucks. And now you're going to have to get your elbows out. Probably going to see a lot of the bumper being put to the rear bumper of other trucks today. That's just how Richmond racing is. And then the one thing that's really neat about Richmond, Joe, is that D-shaped oval. We're typically seeing it on the mile and a half, but here on a three-quarter mile circuit, it totally provides a different line into turn one. It'll be curious to see how everybody plays it out. Yeah, and it's difficult to try and get off of uh, both two and four because of that D-shape and the way the banking is. Now, uh, here is our schedule for the season. And uh, like we said, we're into the round of eight next time, heading off to Darlington. And then, of course, uh, we've got Pocono after that. Really diabolical final few races where it will wind up at Nashville to try and decide our champion for the season. This has uh, been fascinating, and the championship as well. Like we mentioned, uh, Patrick Drabic, remember he was down in 11th coming into this. So for him locking himself in, that was crucial. He was going to have a tough time trying to climb his way forward. He needed a lot of good results, and now 
takes away all that hard work, obviously. So uh, should be a, a, a lot nicer of a time for him from here on out, just trying to make sure that he gets as many bonus points as he can, but really without the pressure of having to worry about if a, he gets a DNF. Uh, we've also got some information on the track itself. Joey, why don't we check out Google Maps? Well, I mentioned it was that D-shaped oval that we've got here at Richmond Raceway, three quarters of a mile long and 14 degrees in the banking. It is difficult to get the power down out of two and out of turn four, completely different arc in the radius on how you approach each end of this racetrack. And the other thing to really note, it is a wide short track. When you get into the slow rolling part of the corners, it does narrow down, but the exits and the entries, they're multiple lanes wide. So it's not usually just a car going down off of the quarter panel. They can really lunge down into these corners. So I can't wait to see how the trucks really drive this racetrack. If we're just gonna see the typical bottom line rules at Richmond or if turn one and turn four are gonna provide some excitement. Sometimes in the past we have seen the high line work a little bit better, but yeah, it's it's something that we're, we're definitely intrigued to see how it will play out. Uh, as for this uh, race itself, it's gonna be 130 laps, uh, which equals to their usual 100 miles that they try to run here. Uh, pit road speed at uh, 40 miles an hour, and as always, a, a two green-white checkers attempts available to them. No fast repair if you wind up with any sort of damage, so you'll uh, have to uh, worry about that. But this is a short track, so damage usually is a little bit less comparatively. Uh, they have a fixed setup in this series, and they also have four total tire sets for the race itself, so three pit stops essentially if you take four tires each time. Now, they are in the midst of practice. They should be wrapping it up in just a couple minutes time here. And this is definitely one where compared to what we saw at Michigan, Joey, track position gonna be very important. It's pretty crucial. So qualifying, you better get your lap right here as we watch about a minute and a half ending up in practice. And then those trucks will roll out onto that five minute qualifying session. But the further up in track position forward that you are, the better off you are. Short track mentality is contact, right? We're gonna see some trucks being spun around and if you can be in front of the mess, that usually means you can avoid the mess. Exactly. And well, you saw how narrow it was down that back stretch too. So that uh, makes it easy to get wrapped up in a mess that wasn't your fault, especially if you're at the back of the field. Jonathan Cofield, who came in uh, as the regular season champion, going to see if he can take the win this time around. He's only fifth in the warm-up, so uh, not looking as quick, but you can't always put too much into the practice times as we check out some of the uh, camera feeds that we've got uh, for tonight, as always, and love seeing some of the drivers' reactions. In fact, last time we happened to catch at least one driver really having a miserable moment there in the race, just frustration being taken out. But uh, can't always get those quite in time, so we try and check in when we can to see what the experience is like for each and every one of them. 20 trucks, it looks like, Joey, going to be taking place out here. On a short track, that's, that's not a bad thing to have a smaller field. Uh, no, and to draw back a week ago, remember, it was Patrick Drabic claiming that checkered flag, so he will advance himself into that round of eight. But I think the more curious part about that finish, it was his teammate, Ryan Pendleton, that just didn't make a move at the end there. Team wins are so valuable here at Goat Locker Racing. I'm going to be curious to see if Ryan Pendleton continues to play the teammate role or if it swaps around and Drabic is there to help push Pendleton forward today. That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, if he's through, then he could repay that favor to his teammate. But they have to be in that position to try and to be able to capitalize on that. We'll see if they're both up at the front and if he can play wingman or not, as it looks like we're getting ready to start our qualifying laps and drivers now heading out as uh, we is usually tradition these days at Richmond. It is a night race. And so we're going to be seeing them run under the lights and it's nicely cool. It's not actually as cool as you would usually expect here but about 80 Fahrenheit on the track surface. That should be pretty decent for them to uh, get up to working temperatures without worrying about them being too cold as Cofield heads it down into one and two for the first time at speed. 
The 53 is always towards the front of the field. It'll be interesting to see what kind of lap Cofield puts down. He kind of ran the middle of the racetrack in one and two, a little bit lower there in three and four, and qualifying is going to go by very fast. The first lap, a 21.519. He sets the early pace. By about three tenths of a second, but we're still missing a lot of drivers, so we could still see that change around as Cofield came down the backstretch. Almost looked like maybe he brushed the wall. I'm not entirely sure. We'll find out here if he crosses the line and the lap is deleted. It is not. He improves to a 21-443. He extends that pole position, but not by a lot. Gardner's behind him by about three hundredths of a second. Watch what the 07 puts down here. He takes the green flag, so... Patrick Drabek, last week's winner, is just starting his first qualifying lap. Looks like he gets off a of turn two quite nicely. Doesn't really go all the way up towards the wall and then runs the high line here in three and four. I wonder if this is purely to set up or if this is actually going to be the 07's line throughout the night at 21.85. That's the first lap to put him in ninth. The second lap, I expect an improvement. Nobody able to topple Cofield yet. Barkas has gone up to third position. Mullins to the outside of that second row. Drabic right now uh, still down in 11th, but we think that first lap was just trying to set up as he comes around the second time. Does improve. A 21.556, though, is only going to be good enough for fifth place. Yeah, slides him right in front of Jamie Mullins and then... Here's that teammate that helped push Drabic to the win last week. This is the 23 of Ryan Pendleton trying to set his second lap time here. He's currently sitting in 14th as he rounds turn number four. The first lap of 2191. Let's see as he crosses right under Barney here. The 2142. That's going to jump him straight to the top. Ryan Pendleton on provisional pole. Wow. So it looks like he is quick once again this time. Hopefully he'll be able to actually take advantage of it and not have to sit patiently behind his teammate Trevor McManus, though. Looks like he's just taking off. Yeah, just coming out of pit lane now onto the backstretch and getting himself up to speed. He is going to try and run that high line, cut back down low and give himself a better whip down into turn one. See what kind of line he really takes. I expect just to paint the yellow line all night long. And you see Trevor kind of run in the uh -oh. second lane and at a big loose moment there, he's going to have to look towards lap number two to put his qualifying effort down. And you can see him go up to the high side. He knows that one's already done with. So no point in trying to ride that one out. So uh, understandably, a very slow lap time on that first time through. Will he continue to cut down at the bottom? Last time that made the car very loose. This time that looked much smoother. Yeah, but still just the car didn't look stable. You saw Trevor just not have the confidence to roll onto the throttle like he wanted to coming out of turn number two and a little bit of a loose moment there as well. A 21.80. It's going to jump him up into 15th, but I think the nine is going to move forward. That will complete all of our drivers to qualify, which means it is now time for our national anthem. Oh, say can you see By the dawn's early light What so proudly we stand At the twilight's last Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we won were so gallantly swung and the rocket's red glare the bombs burst in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. And 
with that, we now begin the gridding for today's race. And starting on the pole for this one, Ryan Pendleton will top Jonathan Cofield. Jeremy Gardner starts in third next to him. After that, Jamie Barkas will start on the outside of the second row with Brandon Evans in P5. Last week's winner, Patrick Drabic, will start from the sixth position. Then it's Jamie Mullins in P7 on the inside as Jacob Ellenson will start in eighth spot. Daniel Cunningham ninth and row five is rounded out by Michael Costa. Then in 11th, we have Brandon Wallace in that number 99. George Jewell is going to be lined up next to him there starting in 12th. James Goshen lined up 13 with Chuck Feltz in 14th. Trevor McManus in that number nine starts in 15th with Alan Marshall in 16th. Matt Knight, 17th, James Kaufman, 18th, Doug Ellingson and Mark McCrary rounding out the 20 trucks that we've got here at Richmond. And we have to remember this is a short season, Joey. This is our cutoff race. We have our two drivers, uh, well, possibly two. If Dravic uh, wins, then it could just be him that takes the win that will automatically be through. Everybody else is going to be squabbling for points to make sure they're in the top eight. And there are some drivers that carried over some kind of call it bonus points into the playoffs. So after round one, things have kind of settled down just a little bit. And like you said, the 07 is the only truck officially locked in as of right now. Once we get the checkered flag tonight, we'll have a second truck officially locked in off of a win. But we are going to advance into that round of eight no matter what happens at the end of tonight. Exactly. So it's going to be important. And like we said, things can get a little crazy here. So drivers will have to at least try and get to that checkered flag first uh, before they worry about anything else. Try and stay out of trouble and stay out of the big packs so that you don't get uh, caught up in somebody else's messes. This is the second and final pacing lap, and we should be released for our 130 lap event with Pendleton starting them off at the front. Cofield has been a quick driver and a consistent driver all season. He could be a serious threat to try and come through and take that uh, win here today. Pace car is in. Pendleton given control and there is the green flag as we accelerate down to the line. Looks like a decent jump there for the number 23 as they dive into one and two. Still very too wide throughout the field. I'm expecting the low lane to start to pull away, but watch out for the speed in that 53 of Cofield. He's always one of the fastest competitors week in and week out. And right now he's challenging Pendleton on the outside for the lead. 15 of Barkas running a lane up compared to everybody else, interestingly. So he's trying that outside line early, seeing if it can find him maybe a better shot off the corner as to the point, Cofield will take the top spot very quickly over Pendleton. You were making the comment of the power down coming out of two and out of four. Well, both lead trucks had a big time wiggle. It was just the 53 that was able to keep the throttle in it a little bit more than Pendleton. So I have a feeling that we're already starting to see these drivers have to deal with that looseness coming off of those corners. Exactly. Bark is going to drop back. He took a little bit of an attempt on Gardner for third, but no dice. And yeah, you're right. Almost every car I've seen come here. If you pinch it down off of two and four, it can be treacherous. We saw it in qualifying with McManus in the number nine. He kind of ran the middle groove in the entry in turn one and then tried to pinch it down off of the exit of two. And it just flat out didn't work. Combine that with the 14 degrees and it really flattening out onto the back straightaway. You have to be careful. And then turn four, it just provides its own other mountain of challenges. See in the background there, Barkas having a slide coming off of four. That's going to allow Dravic to catch up to him. Ellingson also in behind as we hop on board with Jacob. He had a little bit of a slide there, but nothing too dramatic as he catches the truck. Still sitting in behind Dravic right now. This is one of the trucks that I've got circled to watch tonight. Now, he was with his teammates Pendleton and Drabic for the most part of the entire Michigan race, but then a little oopsie on pit road really made Jake Ellingson fall down throughout the field. I wonder if Richmond, he can really pick it back up and advance himself through into that round of eight. Color me surprised, Joey. We've gone extremely single file. I only saw two cars side by side through the whole field that last time through. Uh, I, I get the feeling everybody's kind of in for the long haul on this one. Well, and 
Remember North Wilkesboro, the most recent short track that we had with Goat Locker, is that we had a few incidents, and I shouldn't say a few, we had a lot of incidents, a lot of yellow flags there, and going into this short track, I was expecting to see a little bit of beating and banging, but I think it's turning into more of the traditional GLR racing that we've seen in past, and it's going to be long green flag runs, and save those tires because you're going to need them. Exactly. It's one of the things I kind of jotted down for myself is uh, that green flag stops are a death knell. You do not want to do them, so hold out for that caution if possible. Now, look at the points there on the lower right. Ellingson, who we've been riding on board with, He's below the cut line, but by uh, just actually, no, he's tied on points. Is that correct? Holy cow. Uh, yeah, it shows that he's tied on points with the 99. Now, these are live points, so if there's any passing done on the racetrack, they're going to kind of shake up. But tonight is all about that eighth place. If you are ninth place or below, well, guess what? Your party is over. You're not going to be able to fight for the championship. You still get to go race, but it's pretty much going to be over. And actually, we've got a problem. 85, James Goshen, our first yellow flag of the night. All right, that will send him back to the back of the field. But he didn't hit anything, interestingly. I think he may have had a bit of help, it appears. I think George Jewell is going to make some contact, but this is after the incident already starts. So here's Goshen now in that 85. And yep, yep, just gets helped the rest of the way around. Yeah, you called it. He was already just really loose off of turn number two. And then the, the truck behind here that we're going to ride on board with just it's going to try to avoid. Just sometimes you can't check up fast enough. Let's watch the 85. He's already up the racetrack. There's the loose moment. He lifts off the throttle, and then Jewel just kind of helps him the rest of the way around. This is really a driver's track. So, yeah, we're going to see those who are very good at these more technical circuits uh, thrive here, and those that aren't probably going to be doing a lot of what we just saw there, uh, struggling, sliding around, maybe completely spinning out, bringing out our first caution, at least for now. But we made it about 10 laps in before that finally came out, and it did look very very orderly up until that moment so I, i'm i'm still encouraged that it seems like we should see mostly green flag racing i think so and that really is what glr is all about is the long green flag runs being respectful it's just short track racing tends to get spicy a couple of drivers almost faking an entry to pit lane but nobody actually going in the meantime while we've slowed down Let's go through this week's veteran spotlight, which is Warren Clayton. Last week, we announced that Warren will be, will be receiving the first donated sim rig from GLR. Warren served the United States Marine Corps for four years. While assigned as a rifleman of the 3rd Battalion, 4th Marines at Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center, he participated in deployments to Iraq and Japan. We are thrilled to welcome Warren, uh, Warren to GLR and know that he is going to fit right in. So a big, big welcome to Warren Clayton as uh, drivers look like they're getting ready to go double file here soon. We uh, should be seeing them return to green flag racing shortly. Now, let's just hope that everybody on these somewhat scrub tires now can uh, get on the gas uh, nice and smooth. I'm actually pretty surprised that we didn't see any takers come down pit road. I wouldn't expect to see tires so early, but it's always nice to be able to kind of fill up the tank and then provide you more open doors with the strategy down the road. I just feel that maybe, Joe, so early on, it still really is about that track position right now. Yeah, exactly. So nobody at the back willing to uh, give way at least for now but they are indeed single file with the lights off on the pace car will restart on lap 15 of this race like joey mentioned they will tick by quickly when they go green flag racing at just over 20 seconds to circulate this place here we go pace car is in and this time cofield has control green flag is out and he is underway pendleton with no response. In fact, top three, single file by the time they even get to turn one. Yeah, and then it's side by side between Drabic and Barkus back there in that number 15 come off a turn two and you see how narrow it gets. It really is like a funnel there. Then it opens up here, the short track of Richmond already around turn four, completing the first lap on the restart. 
Still a little bit of side by side farther in the mid pack here as we hop on board in the midst of the battle up on the high side. Let's see how it fares for Caustic. Nice and smooth off the turn. See if it's all about rolling the speed yet. I think these drivers are just kind of full on in aggressive mode, trying to grab whatever positions they can. Now we watch the 27. Jake Ellingson, that's one of the cars directly in front of this, and he's going to try to go around the outside of the 39 of Evans here. He is going to get the track position. He's just simply going to follow the 15 through. I do think that the racing line is all the way down on that yellow painted line. However, you can get choked up coming off a of turn four and off a of turn two if there's a truck on that high line. Yeah, and that's exactly what's happening here is the 27 will not allow the 39 to drift up as much as he wants, and that really hurts his exit. Evans falls back. Ellingson not completely done with the pass yet. He drifts up high once again into the second lane, and this time it looks like he's going to be able to get this done. Yeah, see if the 39 drives it in deep here into turn number one. I, I know that Brandon Evans is typically a very, very smart racer, so... If he feels like he's burning tires up or driving over the car's limit, he will gladly let the 27 slip right onto the racing line and then get back to what his strategy is going to be for the 130 laps tonight. Back we go to the conga line now, and it looks like everybody is pretty much slotted in, barring, I think, Trevor McManus and Brandon Wallace a little bit farther back. But uh, you can see from the onboard here of Brandon that uh, nobody's poking their nose out as it stands now 20 laps into this race and still everybody trying to think about that ending rather than right here in the moment as we watch the 53 of cofield stretch out an impressive lead frankly yeah he's already 1.1 seconds ahead of pendleton and I i'm always a fan of saving tires um However, the 53, he is just simply good at it. He's good at going fast and saving tires. I always watch to see when the fall off happens. It always seems like Cofield is able to maintain the pace. And we got to remember, everybody's on the same setup. It is a fixed setup. It's not like he's driving a different truck than everybody. Exactly. And the other thing to, to note about this is uh, that Drabic is now only separated by one truck between himself and Pendleton. So if they do decide to work together, like we said, like we had theorized, then it, it could happen actually relatively quickly here. To give everybody an idea of the lap. So the fastest lap so far tonight is about a 21.6. Let's see what the leader is this time by as we ride on board with the 42 of Jeremy Gardner sitting in that third place, a 22.1. So we're already at a half a second of fall off, only 24 laps into it. And this is a good time to mention one of our sponsors, Jam Printing and Promotions. Since forming in 2013, Jam has contributed printing and promotional sponsorships to more than 60 local nonprofits, with a primary focus on organizations that assist veterans, women, and children. They have been with Goat Locker Racing since the very beginning. Local and veteran certified, when they do well, they do good in the community. So big thanks to Jam Printing and Promotions. Meanwhile, still following uh, this little trio between Drabic, Gardner, and Pendleton. Pendleton seeming to be under a bit of threat from Gardner. He's been getting close, just haven't seen much poking and prodding. Yeah, that's kind of the best way to describe it is, oh, but he smacks the wall coming off of turn number two. I was going to make the comment that the right rear quarter panel of Pendleton's car on this 23 is already scraped up pretty good, and Giving it another rub, that lap on the back straightaway is certainly not going to help anything. At a short track, aerodynamics, not necessarily crucial, but the more you hit the wall, the higher the chances that you're going to bend something in that suspension, and all of a sudden the truck's not going to drive straight anymore. Exactly. And now it seems like the 42 is starting to think about trying to make a move. Poked his nose a little bit down into three and four, but didn't actually seriously try to get underneath uh, Ryan Pendleton as they go through one and two once again not going to try it this time stays directly in the tire tracks of the number 23. i was also noticing that the 27 was trying to get around jamie barkus here so that was uh jake ellingson trying to get around that black and red number 15 and he went to the inside. He got all sorts of choked up on the uh, back straightaway, and that's allowed Brandon Evans now. And oh, look at the door just get shut 
right in front of the 27. I think that Jake was looking for a little bit more racing room and actually goes up there and rubs Barkus and says, hey, I'm still back here. You know that, right? <laughs> well, now he does for sure as Brandon Evans. Oh, he's also going to try and get in and nothing happening there. Ellingson now going to have to go a little bit defensive potentially. He covers the inside slightly, but then leaves the door open. 39 tries to get his foot in. No dice. You just got to be careful with those defensive moves. You don't want to make them in reaction to that truck behind you. So as long as you are blocking within reason, A-OK, -okay, you just don't want to be reactionary. And I think it's kind of just all getting choked up behind the 15. I do feel like Ellingson is just a little bit quicker. And here goes Evans to the inside of three and a little bit of contact between him and the 27. So, oh boy, the short track stuff, it's starting to come out already. Jake gave him enough space and no more. There was just nothing between them down into that corner. I'm kind of amazed that nobody got turned uh, in that process. So they go back to as they were. Another try for it this time, though. Can't get the overlap. See what everybody can get coming out of the corner here. Just trying to put the power down. And it's also a game of saving your tires here at Richmond. The more you can save them, the faster and faster your truck will get throughout this green flag stint. You can see that Wallace seems to have lost a position because he's now down a point and Ellingson is now through. And, and Jacob uh, really can't afford to take too many risks here considering how tight it is on the bubble. He's got to try and, and make sure that he at least gets, gets to the finish because a wreck is definitely not going to get him through. No, you just want to keep it clean. And yeah, it is all about being in that side, that top eight in points. The 27 just kind of trying to find a way around Barkus, but Evans just all over the back of him. And it is so tough. And there's going to be some more contact. The 39 is going to spin around off of the nose, or I should say off the tail of Ellingson. And I kind of saw this coming here. I expected it to be the 27, though, the one that got turned around. Yeah, really, that was uh, kind of interesting. Almost a, a Vettel at Coda moment there where the car that tries to make the dive is the one that gets wrecked in the end. So the 39, and this is very similar to what we saw into turn three as well. Just kind of got his nose in. This time though, the 27 was not interested in leaving enough of a lane and that's what sends him down to the wall. I mean, that was a perfect shot right there is that the 39 was definitely to the inside, had that rear axle up alongside the front axle and um, just the 27 definitely came down. That was hard racing there and looks like we got the majority coming down for our first set of stops. I am not surprised at all, honestly. Uh, this is, seems right about uh, a good time to try and get some tires to experiment and it seems everybody agrees. See what kind of pace it's going to give you. And did anybody actually No, every single truck is in pit lane. Nobody is taking an alternate strategy. I always say, make sure you stop in your box. Don't slide through it. Don't beat yourself on the racetrack. And it looks like everybody was nice and clean going in. And for the most part, I'd expect four tires here for everybody. I'm watching to see if anybody stops short. And so far, I'm not seeing anyone. Yep. Every single truck also took four tires. Again, the strategy is pretty locked down. Uh, there's no wiggle room on trying to do something different, it seems, for most of them at this stage. We'll see if that change has come the end. If it comes down to it, you know that your championship hopes are on the line. A little curious about what happened to the number 15 truck here, Joe. Uh, he looked to be one of the first trucks off of pit road, but... He is falling to the back of the field. I don't know if it was maybe a speeding coming in or going out, but uh, Jamie Barkus looks like all the way to the back. I'm checking to see. I wouldn't think it would be speeding on the way in. I didn't see any black flags, but the 15 is definitely letting everybody by. Yeah, it, it could have been on the way out. Let me... Uh... Double check and, on that and one. Joe, here, I'm getting some word from race control. The 27 has been handed down an EOL, an end of line penalty for causing that yellow flag. That means Ellingson going to have to restart all the way in the back. Ouch. Oh, that's going to be rough to try and climb back forward. 
Uh, double checked on the 15, and it looks like Barkus was a few miles an hour over by the time he crossed the uh, the exit line, the cones. So uh, I, that may have been uh, an EOL for speeding on his way out of pit lane. But uh, uh, fortunately for him, unfortunately for Jacob, uh, one more car is going to get it, so he'll it won't be completely dead last on this one. Looks like lights are out. They're going to get restarted on lap 40 of this race, and it is still Cofield and Pendleton up on the front row as it has been pretty much the entire race. Pace car is in, coming around to the restart zone here, and Cofield is on it, gets a pretty good jump. Pendleton now going to try and guard the inside of Gardner, and Gardner unable to try and get through on this restart. They are exactly as they were before. Good exit, though, for the 07 of Drabic. Single file for the top five as the 42 looks a little bit to the inside. The first two wide is, I believe, Jamie Mullins. And just as I say that, Daniel Cunningham dips back into line. So then it's the 99 of Brandon Wallace back here arguing with James Goshen as well as George Jewell. So some good fighting a little bit further back in the pack. And the 27 still buried back there. Check out those live standings. He's got a lot of passes to make. And Goshen is impressing me with the way that he is back up into 11th after he spun out earlier on, bringing out the first yellow. So he's halfway up through the field, riding the high side, seeing if he can get by George Jewell. And this 85 just kind of flirting with that a little bit. Got to be careful up on the high side here at Richmond. But if you're OK with the truck being loose on exit, it is all right to drive up there. You just kind of have to drive it with your right foot a little bit more than that steering wheel. Absolutely. And drifting up out to that higher line, going to give him a better shot down the back stretch as he continues to hunt those in front of him. Now, what's interesting in all of this with those live points is that Kostek is in a must win situation. That's the only way he's going to be able to advance and uh, which is interesting cons considering how well he started this season. And remember, he was a regular season winner earlier in the year. So he missed last week at Michigan and it kind of really puts him in a tough place here in points. He has to win pretty much to make himself into that round of eight. He's in a nice position. He's sitting inside the top five right here and can be curious, just keep on advancing. Keep on doing what he's doing. He's already up five positions from where he started. Just keep on chugging along. You never know where it's going to end up. Yeah, honestly, has gained the most positions, barring Alan Marshall, who's up eight into that eighth spot. So uh, both of them moving along pretty well at a track known for being difficult to try and get those passes done. And the laps are now really adding up here. Oh, Ellingson looks like he maybe had a bit of a slide there as he was trying to make a pass on the bottom. It's a tough spot for the 27 to be in. He has to move forward. He can't. Oh, man. And he just rubbed the wall off of turn number four there. A little bit of a wiggle. I think that if I could give some advice to Ellingson inside the cockpit right now, it's not desperation mode yet. Yeah, you're further back in the pack, but we're not even halfway through this race yet. Don't feel like you just have to dig yourself out of the hole immediately. Just kind of keep on trucking along, and you will make your way up towards the front. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think patience is going to be such a key factor in this sort of situation for him. He wants underneath the 25 now, but just not quite enough room coming off the corner. He's going to look for it on the way in. Can he catch? Oh, I was. Yeah, we both saw that the truck wanted to drift up. Kaufman gave him space, but that was almost a wreck. And it was just a really late lunge into turn number three there. I think that with how much speed Ellingson has. All he's got to do is really present the truck on the inside of this lane and think the other drivers are going to respect that and let him have it, just like we see the 25 of Kaufman. Let him have the bottom side of the racetrack here. He's just got to have the confidence that he can roll through. Oh, but he scraped the wall. That'll blunt his momentum a little bit. Looks like the 27's going to be able to get underneath, but not be able to run off the turn nearly as well. Can he maybe get it done here, sending it a little bit deeper? The 25 was way up top on the racetrack, and that just provides him the power down coming off a of turn number four. So 
This is one of those tricky parts about having to race a short track. It gets frustrating inside of that cockpit. And the 27, once again, looks to the inside and three here and really drives it in deep, drifts up kind of a little bit, only half a lane, but now is able to put the power down nicely coming out of four. Looks like Jake will be able to complete the pass here in one and two. You're right. He's through. Nice little bit of learning there from Jacob Ellingson and the nine in front of him. Trevor McManus nearly running it off the circuit as he catches it before he hits the wall there on the back stretch. But now that he's on the bottom, that's going to do him no good. Though two positions in, well, essentially one lap there for the number 27 if he just gets it done here. And it looks like he will. Puts the power down nicely, down onto that back straightaway, and a little bit of a mistake out of the number nine car. Definitely cost him a position, moves Jake up forward. So all he's got to do now is kind of focus on saving the tires a little bit, wiggle those fingers, wiggle those toes, take a deep breath. You're still in it. And we mentioned the fixed setup in this series. They are provided, of course, by Premier Racing Setups. It's the longest running setup shop on iRacing, established in 2016. They offer many different options to help take your sim racing career to the highest levels. With over 50,000 customers worldwide, they've got the tools you need to compete with the best. A special thank you to them for donating the setups for the truck series here. Well, the 99, meanwhile, back here, Brandon Wallace, I believe is through now. Yeah, he's up into eighth position, so he's the man on the bubble as he needs to retain that now. Looks like George Jewell taking place in that ninth spot because Vellington getting demoted back. I think I'd still just kind of keep my eye on that 27 with the live points with everything playing out. I think that the 99 right here, Brandon Wallace, is actually having a fantastic run. I know that Evans is going to look to the inside here. I expect that that black and red truck to continue to move forward. But to talk about Brandon Wallace, you know, he is one of the playoff drivers. I always thought of him in the regular season as one of these guys that doesn't necessarily show up in qualifying, but throughout the pace of the race, he continues to move forward. And then at the end of it, he's always there and has a great finish. Always one of the biggest movers in every week. Got a very serious face when he's racing, apparently. Uh, not looking like a guy you want to mess with out there, but uh, running around the outside, unable to complete the pass on Evans quite yet. He's been working on this a bit, although actually more like Evans trying to overtake him. And indeed, 39 is going to be able to take eighth place. But now Evans is going to go up there and set his sights on that 08 of Daniel Cunningham. We haven't mentioned much of Daniel Cunningham here tonight. He's had a little bit of a quiet night, qualified back there in ninth, currently running in seventh, and going to have a mirror full with that 39 already on his tail. Yeah, it seems like that car is uh, moving pretty quickly right now. So but however he's been driving, it, it's been holding on to the tires very well, and he's got some speed. Ooh, uh, does that almost look like a little bit of a bobble from Cunningham there? Yeah, he just didn't really kind of exit turn two the way that he wanted, and actually looks like the truck is pretty loose right there for the 08. So maybe Daniel kind of drove it a little bit aggressive early on in this green flag stint. It looks like they're about a second and a half back from that sixth place car of Jamie Mullen. So I wonder if the 08 is maybe just kind of struggling with the truck that he's got underneath him currently. Yeah, indeed, it, it, it does appear that way. Evans on the complete opposite route now up into P7, picking him off with relative ease compared to some of his rivals. As uh, I think we're checking back in on P2 here, because kind of noticed in that earlier, because Pendleton and Gardner have been in lockstep for much of this race. Yeah, it seems like we could have gone back 30, 40 laps, and this was an identical battle where the 42 was all over the back of Pendleton, and Cofield is about a second and a half up the road. It just kind of has fallen back into this kind of get the laps chugging along and we're going to see about the green flag stint who saved more tires and right now it looks like the 42 doing a great job of conserving him stuff and starting to pick up a little bit more speed as it goes on we're already pretty pretty far into this stint since that last pit stop about 27 laps in and that first one was uh, uh what was it about uh 30 some odd laps into it 35 i think before it came out and everybody ducked down into pit lane so 
Uh, at this rate, they're going to be starting to head into the territory te uh, huh, territory of the unknown of what these tires will do. And we're going to see also if any of the high lane versus the low lane, the battling or just running single file, if that's going to have an effect on kind of the tire wear as we continue on. And I think that these trucks could probably go 70, maybe even 100 laps here at the three quarter mile short track. So I don't think fuel is of the concern. It's only how far you're falling off and how much you want those tires to allow you to drive the truck the way you want it. Yeah, like I said earlier, it's going to be who blinks first as the 42 kind of wags the tail coming off of turn two. Now he's starting to make his presence a little bit more known almost getting to the bumper of Pendleton as Gardner might be getting a bit more serious about this. Right on the back bumper into that break zone like you were making the comment. I think he's just trying to kind of force Pendleton into a mistake, make that 23 really drive it in further than what he's comfortable with. And he gets close, not as close as last time, but definitely uh, just kind of seeing how much he can flirt with there. Uh, that uh, boundary there as Jeremy Gardner continues to chase on Ryan Pendleton. This is for second and third. Pendleton looking to do what his teammate did and take the win and check him back in on Brandon Wallace, who sits eighth in the points just above the cutoff line. Now it looks like George Jewell actually catching and overtaking him. And he's also got Jacob and Elling uh, Jacob Ellingson getting ready to try and overtake. So Jacob has been doing a good job trying to get himself back in the hunt. Not only are these guys fighting for 9th, 10th, 11th on the racetrack, but they are 8th, 9th, and 10th in that championship point situation. So with Jewel going around Wallace here or trying to get around the number 99, that point situation is going to change because there's only three points separating them. And then the 27 as well, also inserting himself into the party. So maybe with Cunningham in that 08 falling back, there's lots of potential points up for grabs. Which car, or I should say, which truck is going to go out there and grab them? Ooh, Gardner tried to make a move on Pendleton and it did not work in a big way. There was a huge slide out of that number 42. He thankfully caught it, but he definitely used up some of the rears in that attempt. Because of that, look at that lap time of 22.8. That was almost four tenths slower than our leader, Cofield. He's ballooned that up to now what is 2.9 seconds over second place. So the 23 is definitely a little bit slower than the 53, but how much faster are these other cars behind him? Yeah, that, that has really backed them up. I guess the positive spin on this for Jeremy is he learned what not to do. <laughs> I guess you could look at it that way as we ride on board with last week's winner, Patrick Dravick, also kind of having a little bit of a quiet night. He's just kind of hung out inside the top five, but with his teammate Pendleton now kind of falling off on those tires, we've got four, five trucks lined up all wanting that second place. Bit of a shake of the head from Dravick. Not sure what he's unhappy with right now. Uh, everything seems to be going decently for him. A and as we know, he's already locked in, so he doesn't need to win this race necessarily, although it uh, won't do him any harm if he denies somebody else that win. I'm curious, Joe. Remember last week the roles were reversed where Pendleton pushed Drabic to that win? I wonder how much of a teammate that 07 is going to be in trying to go and fill that mirror of the 42, kind of relieve some of that pressure off of Pendleton, if you will. Exactly. That'd be a, a great way that he could try to help out his teammate right now. But wonder if maybe he's struggling to get as close as he wants to put that pressure on. Now he's starting to get near him down into three. So maybe that's a, a, bit, a bit better of a sweet spot for him into that turn. We're approaching that range that we haven't gotten to yet with these tires. They're clicking over to almost 40 laps, and that is 40 green flag laps. We had several cautions in that first kind of pit stop cycle, and this is kind of unknown territory right now where the car is going to go in, tar in terms of that direction. I haven't seen much change, although ooh, Jewel may have just lost a position or is close to losing it from Jacob Ellingson, potentially. He's also fighting with uh, Jamie Barkas, who is going to get to the inside of him. And yeah, Jewel 
down another point, uh, getting dangerously close to being overtaken by Ellingson as we have a yellow, and it is Trevor McManus in the nine, backwards on the backstretch. I wonder if this is just a, a self-spin coming out of turn number two. Remember in qualifying when we were riding on board with the number nine, he was definitely loose there, and I think that's exactly what we're going to see. He is running all by himself right in the middle of the racetrack. This looks uh, remarkably similar to that qualifying lap, and sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Unfortunately for him, though, he actually hits the wall. Just a little bit of a thunk. I don't think it did much damage to him. That'll send him down to 19th. Only driver we have a lap down right now is Doug Ellingson down uh, in the number 58 car. Otherwise, everybody on a short track, amazingly, has managed to stay on the lead lap. I bet you pit road is going to be a very, very busy place. If you come down now, you can make it to the end guaranteed. And here comes everybody. Oh, actually, a huge accordion stack up. I don't know if it was the 23 that jumped on the brakes or the 42 that got in deep. But, Joe, there is contact between Pendleton, Gardner, and Drabic all getting onto pit road. Interesting. Yeah, I don't see any penalties. So I don't think anybody pushed someone into speeding there. So uh, all seems good on that end. They hit their pit stalls. Okay, is anybody going to experiment this time? Because uh, like before, everybody went in. Nobody trying anything crazy in terms of staying out to get track position. And first out going to be Cofield easily, followed by Pendleton with Gardner in behind him. So same order as they were before. And yes, every single driver going to be taking a, four, a full four-tire stop. I don't expect any alternate strategies just with how many green flag laps were on that set of tires. Two tires ain't going to work it. No tires definitely ain't going to cut it. You got to go get that fresh rubber. Absolutely. Also, let's take a moment to talk about another of our sponsors, Veterans for Life Foundation. The goal of the Veterans for Life Foundation is to both revitalize communities and supporting military veterans and their families' successful transition back into civilian life. Through support services, counseling, and education, they provide permanent, affordable housing to veterans and their families. And we can't thank them enough for both their support of this series and for their awesome cause, as we're going to be restarting with less than 50 laps to go this time. Doesn't seem like there's been a whole lot of variation up at the front, especially since we're seeing a, a, a carbon copy of the last restart in terms of those top three positions. I mean, all Cofield has to do is nail it, and it seems like he just easily is able to stretch himself out, Joey. I think that the only truck that's going to beat the 53 is the 53. He, he's going to have to make a mistake of some sort in order to allow somebody to kind of up along the inside. Remember, on all these restarts, he's the one that dictates when to start accelerating. So that's a great advantage here at these short tracks. I just feel like unless he blows a corner or has a black flag speeding on pit lane or something happens, uh, the 53 is going to be the one to beat. And that's not saying that Pendleton can't go up there throw a slide job and grab the lead. I just think it's going to be a tall task. Who is going to come in second? I think that's going to be the more popular talk. I keep glancing down at the standings and kind of checking in on the situation. Here's what's interesting. Jacob Ellingson going to be starting behind Wallace. Now, Wallace is uh, above the cutoff line, but not by much. Uh, and of course, now it's a, a little jumbled up because uh, They've gone side by side, but uh, Ellingson was one point behind George Jewell. So if he passes Wallace, he'll take the guy that he needs to catch uh, down a point, and he should overtake George Jewell for that ninth position. So he'll get a double whammy. Just got to keep it together. Keep the truck clean. Remember how far back you were earlier in the race. You've come so far. Don't throw it away now. You can keep on working forward. You're in a great position. Here we go. Pace car is in. Green flag is out, and it is another very good jump for Cofield. Way ahead of Pendleton. 
Gardner has Drabic around the outside. Remember, we mentioned he could try and challenge him. In fact, they're going to box him in. Wonder if that was a bit of teamwork as the 42 gets loose. And now the 07 has a better shot. Oh, he's going to get turned. They come together in front of the field. Will they save it? No. Both are going to spin around. Little bit of contact. But I think that was not a much bigger, bigger wreck than I expected out of it. That was just a little bit of contact out of the 42 going into the corner there. I really feel like the 42 was kind of desperate coming out of turn number two. He got all sorts of loose, was trying to move back up the racetrack as we're going to get this podium replay. Watch the blue truck on the bottom just makes contact with that left rear quarter panel of Drabic. And then like you were saying, Joe, lucky that more trucks didn't get collected by Gardner as he came back down the racetrack. I mean, the only other little contact that I could find was Cunningham. We're going to watch from on board with uh, Ellingson, it appears here. And just, oh, nice move. Just kind of scythes his way through the trouble and finds the clear track. So very well done. Uh, Cunningham, despite his bit of contact, actually is up to fifth. So I don't think uh, he lost positions, even though he had to check up a bit for that. It looks like they locked them down before uh, he had to fall backwards uh, a little bit here. In the meantime, that means uh, Gardner and Drabic will now go to the back. In fact, Gardner got enough damage. He is sitting in pit lane getting that repaired. Don't know if he'll be able to get out in time for the lead lap, but he might. I'd be curious as we've got our standings on the screen here and Look at that 27. He's still down there in 10th place, but it is closed up. It is only a single point now separating himself, Jewel, and then look at who is in 8th place. That's the 42 of Jeremy Gardner, who was just involved in that incident. So a big time shakeup, and it's about a point per position here. Man, things are winding down, and, and it's getting exciting in terms of that round of eight and who's going to advance and, and it's good news bad news for Gardner he's in last place and he's still above the cut line the bad news is well he can't go farther down his rivals can go farther up so he's still under threat but he knows he's he's in a, a slightly better position than some he just needs to make quick moves forward uh, one thing that we want to move forward is another of our sponsors. That's Cruise and Classics, located in Columbus, Ohio. Cruise and Classics has a beautiful 56,000 square foot showroom filled with hundreds of unique automobiles. There is something for everybody out of their hand picked selection of muscle cars and hot rods. Come on down to visit the facility today or check out their website at cruisingclassicsinc.com. So it looks like lights are still on on the pace car and uh, drivers still single file here. Gardner actually up one position ahead of Doug Ellingson. He must've taken an extra stop or something there and put him behind that number 42. And uh, well, 42 is actually, it looks like he was given an EOL for causing that last yellow. Yeah, I, I think that was kind of rightfully deserved there. Um was all sorts of out of shape coming off of two like we were talking about and then just kind of made contact with the quarter panel of the 07 and i think that the only um okay thing about it you never want to take out a competitor or cause the yellow flag it's just that lucky that drabic has already advanced himself into that round of eight ellingson and jewel very close to trying to jump forward both of them going to be eager and we know that ellingson is able to make some moves but he's starting to get higher up into the field it's going to be harder for that 27 to make up spots now that he's into the faster cars who have so much more to fight for. Here we go. Pace car getting ready to peel off once again. Same deal as before. Pendleton and Cofield on the front row, but this time they've got Mullins and Kostek behind them. Kostek, as we said, is in a need to win as the green flag is out. He's in the top four. What does he do from here? And the 53 gets a fantastic jump out in front of everybody, just leaves everybody in the dust. And Pendleton is actually getting choked down. That opens the door for the 66 of Mullins. He is easily going to get clear into second place, but now he gets a little bit loose off of four, allows the pack to close it back in. It's perhaps the first time all race that we've seen Pendleton lower than second place out there. 
So not sure if he's uh, too worried on this one, but definitely would like to get the win. So would Kostek behind, who's fighting hard with Evans up on that high side. Remember, watch out for Kostek because he's got nothing to lose here. If he can make a bonsai for the win, he's probably going to take it. A terrific come dra comeback drive out of that 39 of Evans who just got around our onboard camera here. Remember, Evans was part of that first yellow flag getting spun around. So now he finds himself up inside the top four trying to steal away third from Pendleton. Wallace still above the cut line and Drabic has turned around. What's happened to Drabic? No caution. He was off the racing line. We'll keep it going. He was into the wall, but it looks like the truck is able to move under its own power. He gets a little loose and just slaps it a bit. Yeah, big old tank slapper coming off at of turn number two. I don't think there was any sort of contact with the, uh, other drivers at all, but we've seen the trucks be really loose off of two and four all day long. That's what I would expect to, to happen. And Check out those championship points. Jake Ellingson has made his way around Brandon Wallace on the racetrack, but Brandon Wallace still ahead, eighth place there in that championship cutoff. Ellingson is going to have to go up there and pass more trucks if he wants to advance. Yeah, Wallace uh, in seventh right now, just behind Ellingson. So maybe he'll take maybe a, a bit of a Hamilton perspective on it, back him up into his rivals, uh, force him to lose a position or two to help himself out. We'll see. We still got 36 laps to go, but the man that has been making this place his playground today is Jonathan Cofield. That I think is the big problem for anybody else hoping to take this win, Joey, because like you said, I, I don't see anybody else beating the 53 except for himself. Yeah, I think that I could circle maybe one other truck probably the 39 that might match him on speed, but the 39 has never had track position all night long and he's sitting back there in fourth. So good luck trying to go up there and catch Cofield. It, it, it really is Jonathan's to go out there and lose. Yeah, and with, with two trucks behind him, uh, uh, between them right now, I, I think that's gonna be tough for Evans to be able to try and do anything unless he makes some quick passes here to be able to move forward. And in fact, I did see him just look right now on the inside of turn one on Pendleton. So maybe he is kind of thinking, now's my time. I got to go. He's constantly been showing the nose down to the inside, but the 23 has just had terrific speed. This is going to be a long enough green flag run that we will see some tire fall off. And I think the one wild card is that 66 of Jamie Mullins. Remember, we haven't had a car in front of Pendleton all night long. Can he keep up the pace or can he actually go up there and maybe even try to flirt with the lead? Still staying right behind Pendleton. Looks like he falls back a little bit. He was much closer before, not working now. But behind him, I can tell you that Jacob Ellingson is also trying to make a move on the number three. And this is for fourth position. Remember, Ellingson needs a scant few points to get above the cut line. This could be an important pass. And the three is holding him way down to the bottom of the racetrack, just trying to do whatever he can to defend the position. But Jake Ellingson continues to work his way forward. here, going to try to roll the bottom in one and two. And yes, he will clear Kostek going on to the back straightaway. Oh, we get a caution. This could change things quite a bit here. Trevor McManus is going to bring that one out in the nine for the second time tonight. This time, though, he got some help, and I think Alan Marshall is involved in it. Let's check out this replay here. So turn two has been McManus's nemesis all night. Oh, he kind of ran wow. over the back of the 82 there, and I think payback? the 82... I, Joe, I, I don't. Again. Yeah, I don't know if it was necessarily payback, but I don't think that the 82 really liked the way he was raced coming out of four. So I don't think he did anything to uh, help prevent getting himself into the nine. <laughs> I'm just going to swing my arms, and if you're in my way, that's your fault. Uh, but uh, yeah, that that's unfortunate to see, and and it starts when he he has a slide actually on his own. And then he gets punted, I guess, because the nine just didn't. He thought maybe he had room to try and run between himself uh, in the wall, but there wasn't. And that's the, what punted him out of the way. And then, unfortunately, the 82 returning the favor 
coming down into the corner. Ooh, now we have some split strategies as this caution has almost perfectly run it down the middle as to who pits and who does not. This this is a tough strategy call to make if you're in the lead and we keep saying that it's Cofield gonna beat himself if anybody, but this could be that one curveball. Tires are worth a ton here at Richmond. And Michael Kostek is the highest driver to have pitted. Looks like Alan Marshall is going to be pitting next. So maybe Joe, has a little bit of leftover damage. Check out the championship standings. The 27 has moved himself up into eighth place because that 99, Brandon Wallace, fell back through the order, but he's on fresh tires. This is really interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's a real gamble, especially considering, like you said, he was above the cut line before. And I think it was two more points that he, he had in buffer. So either he had to lose two places or uh, Ellingson had to pass two, which is going to be tough for Ellingson. So I don't know. This this seems very risky for that. It, it is. Um, if it continues to trend yellow flags, it might be tough to work your way up through the field. However... If we go green and you're on fresh tires and you're three quarters of a second faster than anybody else on the racetrack, at that point, it doesn't matter if you pick the low line or the high line, you'll just be able to put the power down and drive off the corner better than anybody else. So checking in on comparison here and last couple laps for our leaders were in the 22 flats, it looks like. Uh, when they first stopped for tires, believe I'm trying to see if I can find well, it seems like it's still pretty comparable so I'm not sure it, it doesn't seem like there was enough fall off yeah I don't know but green flag is out and this will tell the tale who is going to be quicker will the rubber be enough as Cofield once again jumps away this time though behind him Jamie Mullins gonna follow down into turn one but Ellingson is trying to go around the outside and in fact whoa he gets a little contact with Pendleton is behind a secondary wreck also happening yeah this was just a mess back here we had some slower trucks on old tires and some really fast trucks trying to work their way up through and the 99 of Brandon Wallace, the gamble of fresh tires, it just turned from potential to nightmare. So that was Doug Ellingson who started a spin and that kind of trickled its way backwards. Watch this. Yeah, and then those up oh, at the top had massive hits into the wall, which is not going to be good. Yeah, and I think I see that... Uh not only Doug Ellingson, but George Jewell was kind of collected in that, and, and he doesn't seem um, too pleasantly surprised or pleased on the racetrack because uh, he's gone up there and voiced his displeasure a couple times, and a, a bit unfortunate to have Jewell kind of fall out. I know that he was in the running for that championship eight, but um, yeah, that's a tough one, you know. Wow, okay, so Ellingson now into that uh, eighth position Wallace down by 10 this call for the tires is not looking good he's in pit lane right now actually getting repairs under threat of going a lap down Wallace has taken a gamble and he may have come up snake eyes yeah it's tough and he's gonna stay on the lead lap and remember aerodynamics are not everything here at the short track so as long as he didn't bend any suspension components, he should be able to go out there and race. It's just how competitive can you be and can you make up those positions because he's 11 points behind Ellingson. It's going to have to pass a lot of trucks. I'm starting to wonder if the 27 has a bit more than maybe we imagined because that was some aggressive moves that really paid off at the start. I don't know if he's fast enough for the 53, but he's going to be restarting in third. He'll be underneath the 66 of Mullins. He could steal second here on this restart. Yes, he can. And the 99 is back in pit lane. That's never a good sign. If you come down to pit lane a second time, it usually means that you've got some decent damage on the truck and really need to get it fixed up. But 
Coming to about 20 laps to go once we go back green flag racing. I take that back. It's going to be about 19 laps to go when we get that green flag. Only driver we've lost so far is Trevor McManus. Still have 19 trucks out there on the track circulating, trying to vie for the top eight positions come the round of eight for the end of the season for the championship. But... We have very few laps left to go, and we also have two green-white checkers, so that could extend this race. So we'll go over that if we wind up having to run into overtime, but if they get a yellow late on, we could go into extra laps. Before we get there, we do want to mention Red Beard Design Company. Red Beard Design Co. is a brand design creative agency out of Greenfield, Indiana. They do brand identity, illustration, advertisements, apparel, packaging, and posters. All of GLR's logos since day one are the creation of Red Beard Design Company. So when you see GLR anywhere, you're seeing a Red Beard Design. Big, big thanks to them for helping get this on the air. Now let's see who is going to be celebrating on the air here in just about 20 laps time with Cofield leading them down the back stretch. Pendleton back up into third on this re or fourth on this restart. He's going to be feeling a little bit aggrieved. I want to try and get himself back into the hunt here. Could Ellingson maybe deny Cofield what is looking like a pretty sure win for the 53? Let's wait and see. Pace car is in and the green flag is out once again. Cofield is off like a shot, but look at Pendleton round the outside here. Oh, we got a yellow right away. And I think it's George Jewell and Brandon Wallace coming together just right off of the start. Not entirely sure what happened here. Let's check out the replay. The 99 was on the top lane and the 85, or I'm sorry, the 36 was on the bottom. Let's see if Wallace comes down or in fact, the other truck comes up because this is a very interesting one. <sighs> That's it, tough to tell. It, it's there's a weird almost slowdown for the 99. It's like maybe the truck wasn't going. I don't know what's what's happening here. Yeah. Yeah, see, he just suddenly slows. Yeah. That's strange. But even, even then, the 99 is on the top lane. I'm not sure why the 36 came up into the quarter panel when he's got the entire racetrack below him. I think that's more what I'm questioning versus yeah. the 99 stumbling. Yeah, and we're hearing that it sounds like a missed shift uh, for uh, for Evans there, for Wallace, I should say. And George Jewell just uh, wanted to get up to the high side, thought he was clear, did not expect the slowing down. George actually also got hit from behind in that mess. So that's why he spun in that one as a little piece of uh, somebody's car drifts down into the grass unfortunately so we didn't even I'm not everybody even got by the start finish line on that one remember what I said when we had that split strategy when we had the uh, trucks come down and take the tires that if we had lots of yellow flags it is not going to work out for those takers and I'm seeing the only one that has taken it has not moved up any positions it's the 25 of James Kaufman sitting there in ninth place Everybody ahead of him still on the old stuff. You need green flag laps in order to take care, or I should say take advantage of those fresh tires. Exactly. And, well, yes, if they if they come uh, within a lap or two, you still have a chance to try and make those passes, but that wasn't even an opportunity to do much as they barely made turn one at the front of the field. Uh and yeah, highest up is Kaufman now. Kostek, who was the highest up of those with fresh tires before, has dropped back to 11th. James into the ninth spot. Uh, Ellingson still a full 10 points ahead of Brandon Wallace. He is looking safer and safer. I think that Evans, if we're looking at this championship standings graphic here, I think that that number 39 will continue to move his way up in terms of the points uh, pretty drastically. I only say that because he's sitting in 19th right now. So or I should say 18th, just even a couple passes is going to advance him up there. I think the question is, can Ellingson hold steady at that fourth place? Don't fall down the order anymore. 
However, that 36 of George Jewell is not having the best of days either. I think that tw the 27 might have revived his race officially. Yeah, I mean, just impressive stuff. You can never say die in racing because it isn't over until that checkered flag falls. And uh, Ellingson definitely proving that. Even if he doesn't finish on the podium here, I'd say this is one to be proud of. But uh, we'll see what this one holds as he's swapped spots with Pendleton, who's now going to be restarting on the bottom. Last time, it was Pendleton who ran up high on the restart and was uh, looking like he was going to make up some good spots before he was immediately thwarted by the yellow. And did you see uh, Jake Ellingson, as soon as they picked those lines, he went up there and immediately got to the back bumper of the 53. That tells me the driver is ready to go. His night is far from over. Yeah, <laughs> kind of have the same thing going on with Pendleton here. 23 is uh, not giving the 66 much room. He's got to be careful that he does not spin that truck in front of him because he could get a penalty here if he does. Green flag is out. Doesn't work out for Ellingson quite like he hoped, I imagine. Although he's still got good speed up around the outside. Can he swing fully around? He carries the momentum well. Coming into one and two. He's going to take the high side away, but he slaps the wall and he gets hit once again. Now he's got heavy damage on the right side. Hopefully it didn't hurt the truck too much. It was his teammate Pendleton that got into him. And now we've got another yellow flag on the racetrack. I believe we've got three cars. That's the 25 of Kaufman, Drabic, and the 58 again involved. That's Doug Ellingson. Ellingson was a, a late one into there, it looks like, because I think this starts with Kaufman in that 25. And once again, Alan Marshall hitting a truck in the back to bring it out. Let's see here. Yeah, just starts to turn him. Ooh, and the 07 really had no place to go in all of that. Yeah, you're 100% right. It just, yeah, it started with that 82 running straight over the back of another car. So this car right in front of us is going to make contact with the 25, turns him around, and then Drabic just nowhere to go. And unfortunately, the 58 gets collected into the mess. He was hard on the brakes trying to avoid it. Just a little bit of a, a rear lockup kind of slid him into it. Wow, this has certainly changed complexion. We had a few yellows throughout the race, but certainly not to this degree. 11 laps to go. It's looking more and more likely we will get into that overtime. Look for lap four to be the cutoff point. If we get a caution lap four or later, then we absolutely are not going to be restarting without a green-white checkers. It's been the 53 all night long. It doesn't even matter the restart. He has had the pace and not only the pace, he also has the launch on every single one of these restarts. Still got the lights out here on the pace car. So probably another couple minutes, another couple laps here before we go green. Indeed, that gives us a chance to take a quick break. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Richmond Raceway. We're here for the cutoff race for the playoffs here and the jam printing and promotions go locker racing truck series. And we're on, I'm not sure how many number of cautions, but many of them have happened late in the race and has slowed things up. We've lost our second driver. McManus retired earlier. Now Brandon Wallace, who at one time was looking like he might have a shot at advancing is no longer in the event. 
Yeah, that really shakes things up, so he won't be collecting any more points from this. George Jewell can still collect a few more points. He's running on the racetrack and on the lead lap, and the one caveat, the 27 that has had such an incredible race, digging himself way out of that hole. He smacked the wall hard coming off of turn number two, and I can report he's got heavy front right damage. Hopefully, it doesn't affect the truck too much. Yeah, that's the big question mark uh, with how he's been racing. The drama keeps coming for him, unfortunately. Cofield has been avoiding most of it up at the front. We said that at the start as the green flag comes out. That is key, getting into the clean air and staying away from the problems. Battle for P2 behind them once again. Mullins, Ellingson, Pendleton all going to vie for that spot. Once again, around the outside, looks like Jacob avoids the wall this time. Yeah, Mullins really didn't drift up into that second lane. He respected the 27, but I think Mullins is going to be clear. No, check out Jake Ellingson trying to take away second place on that high line. Pendleton stuck there in the fourth position, boxed in. Ryan Pendleton started this one on pole, but hasn't really been able to lead this race all that much as he follows behind. He's probably wondering where did this go wrong? Because I thought maybe it would be in for a win. Now he's just trying to stay on the podium as these three once again head down in a group and they're being joined. Here comes Barkas and uh, Gardner. Yeah, the 27 got really, really loose that last lap. So we're going to see how much tire he really has underneath that truck because Mullins is hanging tough on that bottom lane. We've seen that top lane be so aggressive in order to box him in four laps to go. This is the point of no return. We'll get a green-white checkers if we get another yellow from here trying to hold them back. Mullins now covering both lanes as Ellingson still on the high side is fighting wheel to wheel with Pendleton. He's getting a little bit of a hello from Gardner who tries to cut down low, but he can't either as he still has Barkas on his inside. And Mullins had a huge loose moment. He's going to check up everybody on that bottom line. The 66 is probably the slowest truck out of them all coming out of two. The 27 gives him a shove. Oh, my goodness. Look at Gardner making a three wide here in four. Not sure if that's going to work out, but it doesn't help Ellingson. Remember, he's easily up into the, the positions to go through on the top eight so he can't really afford to get into too much trouble here going to be white flag next time by pendleton able to finally get to the inside of mullins a little bit can he do anything with it with it ellingson coming around the outside of the number 42 it is going to be a battle for best of the rest on this one as cofield is miles ahead of them even with only about 10 laps of racing here he comes down into three and through four. Jonathan Cofield cannot be stopped today. He'll take the win here at Richmond. And Ellingson has wrecked the car. He falls to the back of the field on the last lap. This is going to drop the 27 out of the championship eight. It all unfolded for Jake Ellingson. Oh, my goodness. I cannot believe I just saw that. And it was from him getting loose. He did have contact with Gardner. Let's watch the replay. But I think he would have, I mean, he would have wound up at the back regardless, even if he had not made that contact way loose. Yeah, and I mean, the 42 was just an innocent bystander. And honestly, check out that save from Gardner there. But it was just Ellingson getting loose out of turn number two, coming down the racetrack, making contact with the 42 and... Uh, the, you see the frustration right there on the camera. He had it. He was in. He just lost it out of two. I didn't even catch that thing on Gardner until you'd said something. That was magnificent to, to collect a 10th place. Because remember, at one point we saw him uh, in, in danger on this one as the 53 is going to burn it down. Jonathan Cofield taking the win. So fantastic stuff. Again, I mean, this was practically a flawless drive from John. You're right. You know, besides qualifying, right, where a different car with that ended in three kind of took that spot, there was no stopping Jonathan Cofield. Every single start, every single restart, every pit stop, every launch, he just laid it all down pretty perfectly and 
claim that checkered flag tonight. Well, it appears Ellington has uh, snatched victory for, or snatched uh, defeat from the jaws of victory, unfortunately, and allowed Jewel to promote himself up into eighth. Evans also going to get through there in seventh. You can see Gardner's was close too. He won't, was only in sixth position at the end of it. Uh, but I think that is going to be uh, uh, the race. So let's go through our finishing order for today's event. Cofield taking another win, locking himself in for sure, as Pendleton will come home second behind him. That won't do him any harm. He should be through as well. Jamie Mullins in third and Barkas in fourth position. After that, it'll it's Michael Kostek in fifth. Mark McCrary, P6, up from 20th, by the way. Failed to qualify and did a great job out there. Goshen brought out the first yellow, but from there, he actually did pretty darn good. He went to seventh in the end. Cunningham was eighth. Drabic wound up ninth, but of a strange day for him. And Gardner, as we said, despite a spin on the fast lap, managed 10th. And Brandon Evans was able to crawl his way back to 11th after that late race EOL penalty. Kaufman here in the number 25 finishes in 12th. Matt Knight's in 13th. Chuck Feltz in 14th. You know, we didn't really talk much about Chuck Feltz tonight, so shout out to that number 75. George Jewell comes home in 15th. Doug Ellingson 16th. Jake Ellingson just with the heartbreak at the end that we covered all night falls all the way back to 17th place. Alan Marshall, 18th, the first car, one lap down. And then the rest of the vehicles here, Brandon Wallace, Trevor McManus, did not finish tonight's race. Looks like we've got our winner ready to talk to us, Jonathan Cofield, with an impressive win. John, you were kind of above it all today. <laughs> Just as soon as the green flag fell, you jumped away to impressive leads. I told y'all last week, I love Richmond. I mean, it it absolutely showed. You seemed to shine here. You didn't take the pole, but it, it didn't seem to matter. You pretty quickly managed to get by Ryan. And I mean, was it ever in any doubt for you today? Was, were there any hiccups or anything that we missed? Uh, I, th I thought I was going to burn my tires off. Um, the setup comes with a, with a lot bigger ratio. Um, I just... I got a background in go-kart racing. I uh, really don't like to turn my steering wheel a lot. Um, so I bumped her down to 10 to 1 and thought I was going to burn the tires off in like 30 laps. But uh, luckily it worked out. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a fun race. So you obviously make the cut. You are already in a pretty good position coming into this one. Uh, but uh, you, you now make it to the, the round of eight. How do you feel heading off to Darlington? Uh, glad I'm locked in, um, which I like Dar Darlington. It ought to be a really good race. Uh, if, ever, if, if we can give a little room in Darlington, we'll put on a, put on a really good show. Uh, turn one and two is really hard to pass in. So if everybody kind of use their head and do all their passing in three and four, um, get spread out a little bit, it should be a good show. Well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, just like I said, I can't tell you how impressed we were with your pace tonight. Congratulations. Appreciate Who it. helped put you in victory lane? Oh, of course, I want to thank you guys. Uh, can't wait to get off here and uh, get me something to eat and uh, sit back and watch it. Um, of course, Premier Racing Setups uh, for being on, on the truck once again. Awesome setup tonight. Uh, they seem to fit my driving style, especially on the short tracks. But uh, Jam Parenting Promotions for... Um, Sponsoring our truck league, uh, Veterans for Life Foundation, Cruising Classics, Right Now Roofing, Red Beard Design Company. Uh, my my sponsors, uh, SM Racing Products, Cofield Asphalt Refinishing, Cofield Supply and Service, and uh, just everybody in the league for letting us, for uh, inviting me in here and let me hang out and uh, all my teammates at uh, Bandits Motor. That was your winner, Jonathan Cofield, here today at Richmond after him. It was Ryan Pendleton who came home in P2. Definitely had to work his way to get back up there. Joey is talking to him. Well, Ryan, congratulations on another second place here. This is a good finish at Richmond. Yeah, I mean, second for me tonight was uh, my ceiling. So I had I was in a different area code than Cofield. That was impressive. So I was racing for second all night. Happy I could uh, race Jamie there at the end for uh, second place. It was a ton of fun. 
So the 66 was able to get by you a little bit later in the race, and we saw you kind of struggle to get back around him. Finally did on the last lap. What was the trick to passing cars here at Richmond? Yeah, it was really tough. You could battle pretty hard on that second line. The preferred line was inside if you're on your own, but uh, if you can pinch them down on that high line, you could kill all their momentum as they want to drift up towards the wall. So really, I think he, uh, Jamie bobbled just a little bit and it let me get far, further enough up to where I could drive it in a little hard and he couldn't hold me down as much. So kind of got lucky. He maybe bobbled a little bit and uh, was able to hop up there to second. I have to ask you about the heartbreak of your teammate in the 27 truck. Mm -hmm. I know that you and him were racing side by side late there in the race. Um, were there any sort of team orders to be friendly or, or was it just kind of every driver out there racing for themselves? No, we were, we were very aware of Jake's situation. And, uh, you know, I think I, I have to go look at the points. I think from everything we went into it with, he was really good where he was at kind of, you know, anywhere in that top five. Um, it's hard when you get up there because you know everyone wants to run as best as they can. We connected with each other a couple times, got lucky. Um, but yeah, you know, it's tough if you if you let off and then you let a crowd of guys by or you know cause something to get backed up behind you, it can mess it up. So we were kind of just trying to get in where we fell in without giving up too much time. But I didn't see exactly what happened at the end there, but I know he got caught up in it. So hopefully he can come out. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the points, but uh, yeah, that's definitely disappointing. Well, Ryan, before I let you go and on to Darlington next week, is there anybody that you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, Jonathan Cofield for being so fast. That was impressive. No, uh, you guys, obviously, for broadcasting this, it's it's so awesome to go back and watch it. The quality you guys uh, have here is just something else. And then everyone that supports Goat Locker Racing, from the drivers, the fans, uh, people behind the scenes, just huge shout out to them. All our sponsors, Jam Printing and Promotions. Premier racing setups. Once again, this truck felt great here at Richmond. Veterans for Life Foundation, Cruising Classics out of Columbus, Ohio, who's my sponsor on the truck. Right now, Roofing and Red Beard Design Company. And uh, everyone be on the lookout. At uh, April 27th, we're doing a special event, so more to follow on that. Uh, I believe you guys are involved as well, so we're very excited to uh, get the news out on that and see how much money we can raise for our, our cause here. That was Ryan Pendleton, your pole sitter tonight, and had a fantastic race coming home in second place at Richmond. Yeah, part of that fantastic race was Jamie Mullins. Jamie, coming home in third, but uh, you were in second on the, the lap before at the white flag. That looked intense between you and Ryan there at the end. Oh, I, actually, that was a blast. I knew Ryan would race me clean, and I think the last 10 laps I've raced – a whole lot different than I did any other race that I've ever raced. I raced so hard. I'm like, I've, everybody kept telling me, you know, through chats that I need to be more aggressive. Uh, at that time, I, I think, you know, Cofield was really just looking in his mirror and saying, thank, trying to thank me, I guess, for trying to hold those guys up. But, you know, I, I did what I had to do. Uh, I'm not proud of it. You know, I think it was clean, but man, racing up front with them guys was a blast. I had a great time. And and this is obviously all happening in the midst of uh, drivers all trying to make it into the top eight. I mean, you did, like you said, what you need to do. How do you deal with everybody else, you know, being just uh, so 100%, 110% around you because they, they need those points? Well, it's i was hoping i would pull away to where even if they gave a hundred and some percent i wouldn't be around it but <laughs> it didn't quite work out the way that i wanted to I, I i can't restart very well uh so when i was out restarting and i couldn't uh, and when when we restarted cofield would blink and i'm like i didn't know where he was so i figured it out every time he blinked is when he hit the throttle so i, I kind of timed it that way but yeah, I mean, these guys, you know, it's short track, it's Richmond, it's a cutoff race. I expected the the intensity to ramp up a lot, but, you know, these guys up here in the front, I know I know what type of drivers they are, and I know they're going to race everybody clean no matter how hard we race. Uh, but overall, you know, podium, I'm happy. Hopefully that puts me into the next round, but you can't sleep. You have to go. I mean, that's why this series is, you know, the, what it is. Absolutely. Uh, again, congratulations on that podium. Did you want to thank anybody before you take off? 
Oh yeah, I definitely. First off, I want to thank y'all for what y'all do. This is a uh, like I said, I, I don't typically watch the, the the streams while I'm racing. I got too much going on, but uh, I'll always like to go back and watch. And I know y'all put out a a great show. But, uh, right right now, roofing the sponsor on my truck. I really want to give a great shout out to them. Uh, sorry I couldn't bring it in, you know, first uh, for my a win. But uh, Jam Perennial Promotions, Premier Racing Setups, you know, Veterans for Life Foundation, Cruising Classic, Reds Beard Design Company, and a great shout out to Goat Locker Racing for what they do here. Um, it, it's a great, great series, great league to be in, uh, and I can't be more happier. That was Jamie Mullins, our third place finisher. And one of the storylines we've been following is Jacob Ellins, uh, Ellingson. And it sounds like Joey has actually caught up with him That's to right. talk about uh, today's race. Well, Jake Ellingson, this is not kind of the terms that I want to be talking <laughs> to you on. Absolutely heartbreak for you tonight. Describe what's going through your head right now. Uh, that's, you just said it yourself. It's just massive heartbreak. Uh, put a lot of work into the, into the season and uh a lot of work in in practices you know outside of you know the league practices to try to you know make it to the next round and uh just kind of sucks you know it is what it is and uh at least the the playoff pressure is is off and uh we'll see if we can't uh go into darlington next week and uh spoil something you mentioned that word pressure playoff pressure and after having kind of a little oopsie at, at Michigan last week, was that really just kind of on your mind going in here at Richmond? Oh, definitely. Uh, definitely. Um, I knew at, last week at Michigan, I, I I really felt like I had the truck to beat uh, all that entire race until, you know, I uh, got a little distracted and uh, kind of sent it in the pit road a little bit too hard. Um, and coming into this week i mean that's all i thought about was trying to place well you know figuring out where i needed to finish where everybody needed to finish i was paying attention i had like things all over the screen to to tell me you know who was where and where i needed to place and um at the end of the race uh all i needed to do was just finish and you know just gas it up a little bit too soon and got loose again and that's all she wrote well, I know interviews like this are not always the easiest. So thank you for coming and talking with us. And also, thank you for coming and racing all season long with GLR. You've put on an amazing show all season, not just tonight with that comeback drive. Is there anybody that you want to give a shout out to? Uh, definitely. I got to thank all the, the, the sponsors that, that help us out at GLR. Uh, Veterans for Life uh, being number one. Jamperning and Promotions, Right Now Roofing, Cruising Classics, uh, you guys at Podium, uh, the guys that broadcast at Nazara, Eddie, who does Tuesday nights with us, um, Premier Racing Setups, uh, my wonderful girlfriend and my daughter, and all of the kids that allow me to have the time to, to, to get on the iRacing and, and have fun with you guys. So I got to thank every, all of them guys for for doing what they do and allowing me to have some fun. Well, that was the driver of the 27 tonight, not wanting that sort of finish here, was hoping to get into that round of eight, but that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. It is. And on a similar theme, we've got Brandon Wallace, who kind of had a similar fate tonight. This one, though, we kind of put this one on the strategy call. Is, is that the same assessment for you? Do you regret taking those tires? Oh, heck yeah, absolutely. The, the track position, you know, thought with 22 laps on the tires, the tires were going to be important. And I know I'm listening to the broadcast as we race, so I, I, I hear where Jake's at. I mean, he's right in front of me, so it's like, okay, he's got to gain three or four. I, I could lose, you know, a couple, three or four. It's like I just got it, you know. So I thought with 30 laps to go, fresh tires was the call. Wasn't the case. Well, that makes me feel a little sheepish because here we were live criticizing your decisions since you're you're sitting oh, there in the good. car listening to us but yeah uh, that's okay uh well i mean uh, what do you do in the these sorts of situations when things start to fall apart around you do you manage to keep a cool head usually or do you find yourself getting flustered in those moments no i don't get too mad i mean it's 
you know, it is short track stuff, and that's, you know, was hoping because most of the race went green flag. You know, we got those long runs in. I thought, okay, if we have a 30-lap run, the tires are, you know, three-tenths or so a lap quicker. I can make up, you know, eight spots. You know, and uh, so it, I just, you know, I know wrecks are going to happen, you know, especially on restarts and cars that can't hold the line and others that are taking it three wide with damaged trucks. It shouldn't have done that, you know, maybe, especially on a playoff race with playoff drivers. But, hey, I mean, that's, you know, I get it. They can't run their race. They can't run mine. We're all here to, to do what we can do. And it just happens. Well, I heard an interesting uh, perspective on it from Jake, who also is out of it. He said that the pressure is now off in the playoffs. Does that, uh, kind of open you up are you now a bit more free to to take some chances yeah i'll take some you know some chances with strategy and stuff i i just unfortunately you know i i have too much respect for the guys in the playoffs and and i'm not going to race them like that you know and be rough on them if it's a playoff guy i'm going to let them go you know that's I, I just there's no reason to to put anybody myself and them in a vulnerable, vulnerable position just you know because i want that position and when it doesn't matter well, regardless, uh, we can't thank you enough for the entertainment tonight, and hopefully we'll get to see you in the remaining rounds, and uh, best of luck to you, sir. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate everything you guys do. That was Brandon Wallace wrapping us up here tonight. And, Joey, one thing I love about these short track races is they always seem to bring the drama, and we were not shy of that tonight. We had drama at the beginning with the championship eight falling way back and it was like a three truck battle there and then we got to watch several of them come from the back up through the field in order to create that late race drama and then oh my goodness the 99 falling out and then ellingson on the very very last lap but hey that's racing sometimes she's a cruel one it really is that's a good way to put it and that's going to wrap us up. Of course, we want you to join us next week at Darlington, Friday, April 26th at 8.15 p.m. Eastern. A huge thanks to those behind the scenes at Podium Esports, Ryan and Rachel Bauer, and thanks to the team today, Eddie, Joey, and Dougie. Until next time, though, race clean, race hard. We'll see you on the track.